Hey everyone. So recently, uh, pretty much around a month ago, the ML.NET team released a preview version of Model Builder, and it includes some pretty nice things. So in this video, we'll go over the preview version and look at what's new. For even more information about what's new in Model Builder and ML.NET version 1.5.5, check out this blog post from Bree. And I'll be going over more details and what's new in Model Builder specifically. And to get the preview, you'll need to sign up using this Microsoft form. And once you sign up, you will get an email with instructions to install the preview version. Now the data we're going to be using will be this NASA Asteroids Classification Dataset. This dataset can help determine if an asteroid can be potentially hazardous, or that is, if it will come close to Earth enough to potentially hit us. I already have a console project created, so I can just go to the project, right click, add, and machine learning. And now instead of showing the model builder screen right away when we do that, we now get this other dialog where we get to name our project. And in fact, this is using a template, so we can just go to add new item and search for model builder. And we have this machine learning template. And I'll give this the name of asteroids. The usual model builder window will now show but if you look at the Solution Explorer, there was a new file added, and this is this mbconfig file. We will look at what's in this file a bit later. Now we can use Model Builder like we had before through the first couple of steps. We'll choose Classification Scenario, and we'll train locally on our machine. Next we'll add the file, and this will take a few seconds since there is quite a bit of data in here. Next we can specify the label to predict, which would be the hazardous column at the end here. And another update in this version are the updated data options for the advanced data options link. This opens a new dialog that will show how we can update the data options. Now these will be autofilled based on what model builder determines from the data, but you can override these if you want. Now the first section after our column names is what purpose the column is. Is it a feature or a label? If it's neither, we can select to ignore the column. The second section is what data type the column is. You can choose either a string, a single, or a float, or a boolean data type. And this last section is a checkbox to tell Model Builder if this column is a categorical feature, meaning that there are a distinct number of string entries in here. Model Builder already determined that the orbiting body column here is already categorical. And as you just saw, we can filter out the column names that we specifically want. The data formatting options are the same, so no updates here, at least not yet. Now, let's train the model, and I'll use 20 seconds. Our top model looks okay with an accuracy of 68%, but that's not too bad for 20 seconds of training. Now, let's go to the next step. We can evaluate it just like usual here. And the next step, there's a bit more here than what we had in the past. There is the option to add consuming the model as projects within your current solution. I will keep a watch on this page as I feel more options will be coming in the future. They also give some sample data in which you can use to help test the consumption of your model. Now let's take a closer look at that mbconfig file. One of the cool features we get with the mbconfig file is that if we close this dialog, and come back to it another time to change the data options or increase the time to run, we can double click on it. And that brings us back into the window. But if you look, it keeps all of our options the same. So it retains that state of what we already did with it. Now if we open this file in a JSON editor, it keeps track of everything in here. And since this is a JSON file, we can keep this in version control so it can be worked on in the future to update the data or to get another run. So if you haven't tried this version of Model Builder yet, I definitely recommend giving it a try and signing up for the preview. And if you have any feedback for it, I encourage you to submit an issue on their GitHub page. Thanks for watching and I'll see y'all next time.